The first sign that your horse needs to see a professional is that it is bucking or pig rooting. Hi everyone, welcome to Pro Tip Tuesday. Today we are going to talk about the nine signs your horse needs to see a professional. And by professional, I mean chiropractor or physio. My horses are maintained regularly. They will see their chiropractor every six to eight weeks. And they also see my red light girl uh, as often as they need. And so that might be once a fortnight or once a week, depends if there's an injury or if we've done some particularly hard training. Um, otherwise, the other thing would be if they were a young horse or a breaker, I would keep them you know, regularly going to the, the chiro or the physio or the red light just as a matter of course to help prevent any injuries and any muscle soreness. The first sign that your horse needs to see a professional is that it is bucking or pig rooting. Um, of course, horses only buck or pig root if there's a saddle fitting issue or if they have a back issue. Um, sometimes if they're pig rooting going into canter, that will be a sacro issue in the back end. And um, that, will, that is a thing that will stop you cantering, which is the second point. If your horse won't pick up the canter lead and it might only be one way, which is really, really common. Um, a, a horse that will canter will happily canter one way but won't pick up the lead the other way probably has sacro issues and that is definitely worth seeing a professional for um, and for the sacro especially I would go to a chiropractor and just on that make sure you make sure you see a chiropractor that is a degree qualified chiropractor my chiropractor is a doctor so that means he's done at least six years of study at university. Um, do, not, <laughs> do not see someone without that level of qualification. Um, my Cairo calls them leg pullers and I luckily I haven't experienced that kind of thing. So if someone calls themselves a chiropractor and they do not have the, uh, the um, relevant education, avoid at all costs. So the, the next sign that your horse needs to see a professional is head tossing. Now head tossing covers a whole gamut of issues, but one of the issues that it could be is back issues, um, either saddle fitting or a, just tight muscles in the back, or if your horse has had a slip out, out in the paddock, that's another reason that they can get back issues. And sometimes when they have a slip out in the paddock, it can present as saddle fitting issues. So just be really wary of that you want to just keep keep working on the problem until you solve it and don't be afraid to do what it takes to get the problem solved uh, another reason uh, so head tossing again could also be uh, discomfort in general so you know and it could head tossing can often be several sore areas so it might be back and rump or it might be back and tricep or it could be you know if, if the horse is, has a sore back and then it's not very happy in the mouth head tossing is a hard one to diagnose but they do only toss their heads because they're uncomfortable and they can't tell you any other way checking the tricep on the horse you want to run your hand down the side from about the gullet plate in the saddle down to where the girth goes and all the way under the elbow. You're looking for any sore spots and then I would go over it with more pressure and you know a bit more pinpointed. Here I'm using a pressure of about 8 out of 10. If your horse is uncomfortable with a 1 or a 2 out of 10 then they definitely need a professional. The next one is bit chomping and it's not to be confused with the gentle chewing that then creates the foam. Um, the gentle chewing and the foam is great, that's what you want all the time, but the chomping, the really um, uh, the loud, the noisy and you can hear the teeth chomp together, that's a sign that the horse is either uncomfortable or isn't you know either uncomfortable in its body or uncomfortable in the work so you could work towards finding the answer to that 
and so you could sort the horse's body out first and then you, you probably find that it will be more comfortable in its work as a result. The next thing is sore back muscles. So when you test when you test the horse's back, I like to give my um, when I do the testing, I like to give it a score out of ten because then I can make a note of that in the diary and uh, keep tra keep a track and see if it gets better next week or if it gets better with this treatment or if I have to go down uh, a different road. But yeah, so I always keep a, a score or make a score and jot that down. Even if it's in my own head, I'm used to keeping it in my head. But if it was, um, you know, if I only had one horse or I didn't do that kind of thing very often, I would definitely write that down. Checking the back of the horse, you want to start a line that runs parallel to the spine and that line starts about where the gullet plate of the saddle sits. So you want to make sure you're checking the back underneath the main panel of the saddle. So this is the line that runs parallel to the spine and then you can do your pinpoint, uh, your pressure test. I'm using about an eight out of 10 here. So this horse is pretty good. Um, there's a little flint right there. This horse has had a lot of work in the last two days so that um, could easily explain the flinch. I would rank that flinch as a 1 out of 10. Anything that's a 2 out of 10 or more, I give them a rest day. Um, if it's a 3 or 4 out of 10, they will have rest days until they can see uh, the professional, either the chiropractor or the physio. So there, that's the first line. Then you go to the next line down. So it's a little lower. So trace that line of muscle and then you want to do your pressure test. Again, I'm using about an eight out of 10 pressure as much as I can with one hand. So if your horse is flinching under that kind of pressure, then they definitely need to get some help. But as you can see, this horse is pretty good. Uh, the next thing, the next sign is tender or sore rump muscles and the rump is a huge chunk of the horse. So there's lots of muscles in there, there's lots going on in there. So, uh, you know, don't be afraid to test the rump muscles and see what kind of response you get. The horse that, you know, ducks down and just about collapses on the floor definitely needs to see a chiropractor and then you'll probably need to follow up with physio or red light or something similar. Checking the rump of the horse, you will start at the point of the rump. Just to, You can put your hand on the spine and then you come out just a little bit from the spine. And that is where the first line of muscles that you're going to check, that's where that starts. So you come out a little bit from the spine and then you can check that muscle there. You can see this horse has a little flinch. It's probably a one, a one and a half. Again, this horse had a lot of work in the previous two days and that would be causing those flinches. So this is the line, it's not quite parallel, it comes a little towards, uh, away from the dock. The second line here, again, it's not quite parallel, um, it comes away. And then the third line is a curved line, again, not quite parallel. On each of these three lines, there are pressure points that you can test and you may or may not find muscles that are either sore, uncomfortable, but this is a great place to find, especially up the top of the rump here, is where you'll find any sacro issues and uh, that might explain, you know, cantering issues, flexion and bend issues. This last line is just above the hip and follows back along the rump. Uh, another sign that your horse needs to see a professional is that it won't bend one way. And so it's a bit the same as the canter, you know, happily, the horse will happily bend the other way and then you, you go on the opposite rein and the horse is like a board. And if you really in, push the point and insist, then you probably get a, a more, you know, an upgraded reaction, a more severe reaction, so that the horse doesn't have to do that bending. That could be a, a, a list of things, um, but often it's in the pole. Uh, it can also be a problem in the shoulder. 
Another sign is that the horse bites when saddling up or girthing up. So when you go to put the saddle on top and the horse tries to bite you, you know, often there's, there's back issues. There could be issues right behind the wither, uh, right behind the shoulder. Or the alternative is when you're girthing up. If you're girthing up and the horse tries to bite, that's often a sign of um, tight triceps, sore triceps, and that of, often, that's really, really common in young horses and especially from the breaker. I've never seen a horse come back from the breaker who doesn't have tight triceps. And that's merely because the horse has just spent, you know, whatever it is, four, six weeks having a girth put on when it's not used to having a girth. So um, yeah, take care, of those, um, take care of those triceps and the girth area on your young horse, on your breaker. And the last sign that a horse needs to see a professional is that it won't go forward as easily as before. So take note, you know, I always encourage people when you ride, take notes in your diary and you'll be able to look back and see when things were good or if they weren't so good, but you want to be able to compare now and before. So if your horse is not going forward quite so easily, that could be a variety of things. It could be that the horse just isn't in front of the leg, but you wanna make sure it's not because it's uncomfortable or sore. So how do you tell? I would do some testing of the back muscles. I would test all the way down the girth and I would test over the rump. Um, you can also check the shoulders, do some shoulder testing, but uh, yeah, often it's girth or back or both um, when it won't go forward. So those are the nine signs that your horse needs to see a professional chiropractor or physio. And don't forget each of those do different things. And um, you know, do your own homework. You want to be able to be satisfied that what you're doing for your horse, what you're paying your hard earned money for is the best possible solution. Um, but often it's a combination. I, I don't know, I don't know that I've ever just stuck to one, one thing, but yeah, my horses all see the chiropractor and then it's followed up by some sort of uh, muscle, either, you know, massage or red light, um, but you can also follow it up with physio as well. So I hope this pro tip helps you. If you like this video, don't forget to like it, share it and write a comment below. Does your horse have a behavior that's unusual and you think might be related to soreness or discomfort? Put that in the comments below and we can continue talking there. I hope you've liked this video. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.